Before we get started, let's just take a look at some Queensland coronavirus statistics. In total, throughout the entire pandemic, only six people have lost their lives. Now, this is in a population of over 5 million people, I believe, in my home state of Queensland in Australia. In total, only 1,287 people have had the virus or had the disease. And that's probably fairly accurate because we've performed over 1.65 million tests. Pretty much everybody gets tested. You have a runny nose or a cough, you go get tested. And despite that, only 1,287 people have had it. There have been four new cases in the last 24 hours, and this has caused the Queensland government to use some extreme, go to some extreme measures. Uh, in Queensland, in total, there are only 27 active cases, all of which are accounted for, and all of which are in quarantine. So what did the Queensland government do because of this recent cluster? Well, let's have a look. Mining camps. Coronavirus mining camps for overseas travellers in Queensland. Queensland COVID update. International arrivals could be forced into mining camps. And even in Japan, they're reporting, Australian state considers remote mining camps for coronavirus quarantine. What other countries have used camps to keep their populations at bay? Hmm, I'll let you have a think about that one. So let's look at one of these articles. This is from the ABC News, so Australia's public broadcaster. Queensland considers mining camps for quarantining travellers with four new cases recorded. Sounds like dire straits, doesn't it? This was posted yesterday, so the 14th of January 2021. There's our Supreme Leader, Anastasia Palaszczuk. Queensland Premier is considering housing returned travellers in mining camps. Hmm. The Queensland Government will consider using mining camps to quarantine international travellers as the state grapples with a cluster of the highly contagious UK strain of coronavirus. Yes, the highly contagious UK strain. That's all we seem to hear about recently. Uh, she said, We are going to look at all options, and one of those options is to look at some of the mining camps that we have in Queensland. Okay, just, in, just to allay some of your fears, these mining camps aren't the worst mining camps. Now for a start, some of these mining camps are four star. My understanding is most of them, the ones we're looking at, have balconies. So there's a lot of fresh air for guests and also too, there's the capacity for all of the staff and the cleaners and everyone to also be based on those sites as well. How wonderful being stuck in an isolated camp with a balcony. I think this is a rational option, and if we are dealing with a strain which is up to 70% more infectious, I think we need to be really serious about it. I like how she uses the word if. If we are dealing with a strain which is up to 70% more infectious. Hmm, I've got to question this number, I think. Now, despite this being extremely infectious, no cases linked to Hotel Grand Chancellor so far. Queensland recorded four new cases of coronavirus overnight. All were in hotel quarantine. Two were returned travellers from South Africa, and two from the United States. So none of these were community spread cases. They were all returned travellers. There are 27 active cases, as we saw before, in the state after more than 13,000 tests were conducted in the past 24 hours. They're trying their damnedest to find as many cases as they can, but the best they can do is get these return travellers. Uh, that's, the, that's the only people coming up positive here. Okay. More than 220 staff at the hotel are being tested and isolated, along with 147 former guests. Figures revised down since yesterday. Um, they're actually moving all the guests from that uh, previous hotel to this new one. All travellers who were quarantining at Brisbane's Grand Chancellor Hotel have been moved to the Western, also in the CBD. Furthermore, 406 contacts of the cleaner and her partner have been contacted, tested and isolated. So far, none of them have tested positive. So yeah, previously a lady who was a cleaner in one of these hotels uh, went out into the community positive with the virus unknowingly I assume, uh, for about five days I believe, and not a single person has come back with any uh, of this new highly contagious strain of UK coronavirus. Looking good, but not in the clear yet. 
Queensland's Chief Health Officer Jeanette Young had very little concern that the UK variant had spread into the community. I'm very confident that we have found the close contacts of both the cleaner and her partner, and because we had those three days that people weren't leaving their home and people followed those instructions brilliantly, then I have very little concern that the spread in the community Hmm, so we had this three-day lockdown in Brisbane, or the Greater Brisbane region, um, which I think did absolutely nothing. I can't understand why they did it. They just wanted to kind of see what was going to happen. They were a bit scared, the government were a bit scared that maybe the lady who'd been out in the community for five days might have spread it everywhere. So they just wanted to just put a sort of a pause on everything, get everybody in quarantine for three days, just to see what happens. As it turns out, absolutely nobody caught it. They tested every one of her close contacts. So far, we haven't had any positives, which is good, but we all have to remember that 14-day incubation period. Just in case that you've sort of not, you're not scared anymore, you have to remember there's a 14-day incubation period, so some more cases could pop up. I think the government are hoping, hoping that something pops up so they can justify everything that they've done to us. Um, here's one more thing that they've forced upon the populace, face masks. So even though nobody caught any of the, uh, nobody caught uh, this UK strain in the community, face masks for the Greater Brisbane region have become uh, mandatory. You must carry a face mask with you at all times when you leave home, unless you have a lawful reason not to. You must wear a mask in indoor spaces, except in your home. And just in case you don't understand what an indoor space is, they've given you a some examples. Hmm. <laughs> Anyway, regarding that cleaner, just in case you weren't aware, the highly contagious strain was detected in a cleaner who spent five days in the community in early January after contracting the virus at Brisbane Quarantine Hotel. And because of that, masks will be mandatory for another 10 days until 1am on, on January 22nd. You've got to wonder, will they really only be mandatory until January 22nd? I mean, there was only, what, a single case? with her partner testing positive, and they locked down the place and made ma masks mandatory. Does that mean only another single case will send us into another lockdown? I mean, how far will we go with this? You know what we call this in Australia? We call this a beat up. Now this is the Australian New Zealand uh, definition of the word, a beat up. An artificially or disingenuously manufactured outcry, usually in the media. And that's exactly what this is. Nobody is catching coronavirus in Queensland. Not in the community, at least. The only cases they can ever find are people who either have come back with the virus or cleaners who have been cleaning in those uh, quarantine hotels. That's the only people getting this virus. And we're treating it like, uh, you know, it's World War Three. We're going to all die. So the best thing we can do, of course, is send everybody to the mining camps. That will really teach us that coronavirus is deadly and worthy of sending us to a camp. What are your thoughts? Are mining camps good? Are face masks essential? How long will this go on for? Should we continue doing this until there's just like no more coronavirus left in the world? If that's true, we'll be doing this forever. <laughs>